Our guest in this segment always has to be four moves ahead because he is the director of financial aid at Shepherd University, Jacob Witt. Jacob, welcome back to the program. Great to have you, sir. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Your game is a chess game because you have to be ahead of the moves that need to be made, and you need to know what they are before they're made. That's why, uh, Jacob, when we assign you a chess piece, I think we should assign you the piece of king. Well, that sounds pretty legit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, Jacob, we are into the month of May. Where does that yeah. put you on the FAFSA form deadlines in regards to financial aid? Before we get into the changes that have been made recently, give us the time schedule here. Yeah, uh, we're just looking at we have received FAFSA from the Department of Education. Um, there have been issues with those FAFSAs. Um, Currently, there well, there has been 40 issues so far. 21 of them have been resolved. That leaves 19 left to be resolved, and we're working through those. Um, at Shepherd, we received them. We're working through the process of getting them lined up with our system so we can package incoming freshmen for the fall. That's something we usually do in December. And it is May, and we still have not done that yet. Okay. So, so during the break, um, the other guys were saying, hey, John, what does FAFSA mean? And I said, really, you don't know what that means? And, of course, <laughs> I know what it means, but just if you could go ahead and tell the audience <laughs> and, and my, my fellow co-hosts here what, what that actually means. Yeah, the FAFSA stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid. It is a form that... It's just what you said, John. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a free application to get to determine if you're eligible for federal financial aid. Now, state organizations, uh, West Virginia Higher uh, Education Policy Commission uses the FAFSA data to determine their state aid. We use the FAFSA that data to determine scholarships aid at Shepherd University. So. A lot of institutions use that data for their own institutional aid at the same time. So it's not just for federal. A lot of people use it across the board. What changes have been made this year that parents and students need to be aware of? Oh, uh, well, they the goal was to make it more accessible and easier to process and that was the goal for the students and the parents and i think they did that they did make it easier for someone to fill out the fafsa i have staff in my department that fill out the fafsa every year just to see what it's like so we understand what the parents and students are going through and it took them five minutes to fill out this current year's fafsa where it normally would take about 20 minutes for a professional financial aid counselor to do it took us five minutes instead of 20. so it's definitely faster and less data to fill out but they took off some of that data at the same time that the schools use and so we have to manipulate our system to make take in the changes that they've made and and calculate how to package the student with less information that we used to have fair enough when my youngest son was going through the college experience and he'll be 27 this summer uh, i had heard the horrors of the fafsa form and jacob to be honest with you i never found the form to be that complex or challenging my issue was trying to get into the site for the form because I could never get it to take the same password and username twice. <laughs> At the end, I had about 47 different usernames and passwords because it was just impossible to log on to. Is that a common complaint? Or am I just an uh, idiot? <laughs> well, they, they've they made it better every year as you go along. So, yes, you do have to have an FSA ID, um, which is their password, username to get into um, the FAFSA or studentaid.gov, which is the website that it's all on now. It's all in one location. 
but you have to have that FSA ID. Now, there is, just like every organization, if you don't know your password, you forgot it, then you can put in, I mean, they give you the option of email, phone number, um, or your user ID when you sign in. And so hopefully you know one of those three. And then if you know one of those three, then you have to know your password, but they always have the button, forgot password. So then they take you through some steps. And it's, it's not as hard as it used to be. It definitely used to be harder. Um, you had to know your password, and now it's to the point where it's pretty, it's pretty uh, quick in giving you the information so you can get a new password if you need one. College costs have risen above and beyond the pace of inflation at many universities. Shepard has done a great job of keeping costs down at the university. Jacob, do you know what it will cost to go to Shepard in the upcoming academic year starting in the fall? Uh, there are figures. Uh, our board approved um, a slight increase in in-state tuition, no increase in out-of-state tuition, and um, so uh, I'm trying to think of what the number is exactly. I have it, but I don't know exactly what it is. So I don't want to tell it, you exactly what that number is. Do you know the percentages in terms of how, what percentage of students at Shepherd are receiving financial aid? And of, of that, uh, how much of it is what percentage would be getting uh, grants that don't need paid back versus loans that do need paid back? Yeah, it's. I think that runs right around 30% of all students that uh, apply to Shepherd are eligible for what's called the Federal Pell Grant, which is a grant that you don't have to pay back. It's from the federal government. Then there's also state grants, and um, so from the state of West Virginia, if you're an in-state resident graduating from a West Virginia high school, you uh, may be eligible for the Promise Scholarship uh, that has to have a GPA and test scores. Um, and then there's the West Virginia grant for need-based scholarships. Um, it's a grant, so it's need-based, and it if you have the need, then you'll be eligible for that grant, which is you don't have to pay back any grants or scholarships. And then at Shepherd, we have our own institutional scholarships that we award also. So um, I don't have the exact percentage of how many students receive some type of free aid. I think I had that number in the past. I haven't updated that number lately. So um, plus, we haven't packaged students yet for the new year, so we're still trying to get that done and all the numbers together for that, too. So, Jacob, do all of those various grants also work off of the FAFSA, or are there additional forms that a student and their family may need to fill out? Uh, if they do the FAFSA, most of them are just FAFSA-related um, we do have a scholarships that are awarded by the financial aid department at Shepherd University, and we do have a scholarship application that they can find on our website. Um, and then the state grants, there is another application for the Promise Scholarship, which is one of the scholarships that the state offers. And um, so they either use the FAFSA, they use the FAFSA and an application to apply for that. But then uh, with the state of the emergency that uh, Governor Justice put in place because of the FAFSA, they did uh, create another application so you don't have to fill out the FAFSA. Is the FAFSA a kind of one and done form to fill out, in other words, heading into that freshman year, and that's going to establish what may take place over the next four to five years of my college education, or do I need to go back and look at filling one out each year? You, for federal student aid, you have to fill one out every single year. All four years you're in school. Uh, for the state promise scholarship, 
they only make you fill it out for the first year and then you're good you don't have to fill it out again but for the West Virginia grant you have to fill it out every year for Shepherd University institutional aid scholarships grants um, you do have to we do require a FAFSA each and every year and I noticed you said earlier that those in your department going back and, and looking at it and going through it could, could actually fill out the new one in about five minutes. What type of information should a parent kind of have in front of them as they get ready to fill that out? Do they need like, you know, their most recent tax form so that they have income and that type of information to put in? No, actually the way, well, let's put it this way. If you can pull the data over from um, the IRS in the FAFSA, then you don't need any tax returns because it will pull it over for you. But there are some situations where you may have to fill it out yourself. And if you have to fill it out yourself, then yes, you need your taxes in front of you to fill it out. But they've made it a lot easier. They've gotten an agreement. The Department of Education has an agreement with IRS to actually retrieve that data from the IRS. And it is very simple and easy. All you have to do is know your social, your date of birth, your email address. You put that in and it actually and you give it consent to go out to the IRS and pull that data in and then it will pull that data in immediately. So when it comes time for student aid, uh, this is John, uh, <clears throat> The a freshman in college is going to be 18 years old, so he, he or she is an adult. How important is, is it the parents who are filling this out and using their financial data, or can the adult, emancipated adult, uh, fill out and qualify or not qualify based on their own financial status, which I'm going to guess is somewhat less advanced than that of their parents? Yeah, the, the Department of Education has set standards that consider a student independent versus dependent. And if you're considered dependent, parents' information has to be on the FAFSA, or it limits the amount of aid you're eligible for if your parents refuse to fill out the FAFSA and you're a dependent student. There are some instances that students may be considered independent, um, even though they were normally would normally be considered dependent. Uh, the de dependent to independent status, mainly it's the age of 24. You're not considered independent until you turn the age of 24. You're a veteran in the military, or you're a veteran or you're active duty in military service, you have a child or you are married, or you completed your undergraduate degree. Um, there's some other ones um, that go a little deeper, and that's the ones that could make you independent um, in some cases. So. So we we hear on the news a couple billion dollars here, a couple billion dollars there of student debt being forgiven. Uh, is is it this kind of debt that is being forgiven, or is it is it different? Or do you know? Well, when when they say debt forgiven, they're talking about the federal student loans. Um, they're not talking about the grants or scholarships because they don't have to pay those back. So they're talking about mainly the subsidized and unsubsidized Stafford loans that are being forgiven. Uh, a student can, the, a freshman coming into college can get up to 5,500 in federal student loans. And uh, that's either, some of it can be sub, some of it can be unsub. Uh, but the total amount for the freshman is 5500 and it goes up as you get into the next grade level and next grade level. So um, students that borrow money every single year at least is going to have 5500 every single year. It goes up by approximately $1,000 every year. So... Um, so they have that money left over that they owe after they graduate from college, 
And what the federal government is trying to do is trying to get rid of some of that debt. So, And the access to those student loans comes also from that FAFSA information as well? Yes. All right. Jacob, what has been our now the, Go ahead, the, Jacob. The FAFSA, I'm sorry, the FAFSA is the initial application, but you have to fill out a master promissory note in the insurance counseling to get the loan. So it isn't like you fill out the FAFSA and then the school gives you a loan and you don't know about it. So just want to make that clear. <laughs> right, right. How about work-study programs uh, and, and those opportunities for a student? Okay, they fill out the FAFSA. They're going to get a little bit of grant money. Let's say it's the Pell Grant. They look at, at a loan and go, you know, I, I don't know how much of that I want to take. Are there programs that allow them to do work that, that helps offset some of that cost at the university? Yeah, it does. Um, there's federal work study, which is, again, a federal program that they can, um, they have to have need to be eligible for the federal work study program, but it's a job on campus that you work your hours and you get paid for those hours and you get a check and then you use that money if you want to for your edu I mean you use it for educational expenses but it doesn't have to be the bill itself that money does not apply to the bill because it comes to the student in a paycheck so and then on, at Shepherd and most other universities we have federal work study for if you have need but then we have student employment if you have no need you can also get a job on campus and um it's the same amount of money that they all get paid for the most part so Jacob uh, explain the difference between the different loans that are available guaranteed student loans non-guaranteed student loans uh, loans from the federal government versus private sector loans, loans that the student takes out versus loans that the parent takes out or loans the student takes out that the parent co-signs for. Yeah. So And you have, you have 30 federal, seconds, by the way, to get to that. Okay. I'm just kidding. Federal student you time. loans, uh, you have the subsidized and the unsubsidized Stafford loan. The subsidized meaning that your interest is subsidized while you're in school. So you don't accrue any interest while you're in school on the subsidized Stafford loan. That is the best loan that you can get to go to school because if you pay it off before you graduate, you had an interest-free loan while you were in school other than the loan fees that came out of the loan. The unsubsidized Stafford loan, uh, or direct loan, I'm sorry, um, that is, it's the same interest rate. You don't have to start paying it back till six months after you graduate and but interest does accrue while you're in school the interest rates are the best rates that you can get most of the time they can be any private loan that you could take out so those are the best loans if you have to take out a loan for school then those are the best loans to do uh, the next best loan is the parent plus loan the parent plus loan it is a credit-based loan so they do look at the parents credit but the parent can take out a loan to cover as much of the cost as they need to up to the cost of attendance, which is uh, estimated cost that the university puts together for each year you're in school. And um, so they can borrow up to the cost of attendance. The interest rate is a little higher than the student loans, but it's not, usually it beats most of the private loans out there. Um, and it's mainly um, just a credit check to see do you have adverse credit history. If you don't, you're most likely going to be eligible for that. So that's the second, that's the third best loan that parents can do or students can get to go to school. Then outside of that, if the parents don't have good credit, uh, students may be eligible for a little bit more in the federal student loans, so that helps if they get denied for the Parent PLUS loan, then the student can borrow more. Um, but if not, and they want to take out a parent uh, private loan, then there's private loans out there, and that's all throughout the private industry. Uh, there's We have a private loan um, 
I don't even know what to call it, um, where you can go on our website and you can see all the private loans that you can apply for. And you can go through our website to do all that at Shepherd University Financial Aid. And there's a list of like eight or ten private loans that you could do, but you could go to your credit union or any other bank and ask for a private educational loan. And they probably have that product at their bank, and they would you apply, and they're going to check your credit. The interest rates are going to be a little higher. Um, some of them, I would say most of them, and because they're educational loans, they do they do allow postponement of payment, but some of them don't, and say you have to start paying this right away. Um, so those are pretty much all of them. Okay, so Jacob, I'm going all the way back to the beginning, and from yeah. what you talked about, it sounded like that Stafford loan number one was the one I want. Are there limits to how much money is available through those? In other words, when I hear all those other options, I go back to that first one and go, wait a minute, if I can defer any interest and potentially even pay it off without any interest by the time my four years is done, that's what I would do. So I'd imagine a lot of people want to do that. Are there limited funds available? Yeah, well... I wouldn't say limited funds as in the federal government has limited funds there, but uh, the first year student, undergraduate, dependent student can only borrow out of the 5,500, 5,500, they can only get 3,500 in the subsidized Stafford loan. So it it is limited by grade level. First year in school, you get 35 in the subsidized. Second year, you get 45 third and fourth year you get 5500 in the subsidized Stafford loan. Jacob, way back in my day of going to college, I remember getting a uh, federal student loan and they subtracted an insurance premium from the total that they gave me. It was uh, the first year they did it, it was you know maybe 3%, but the second year it jumped up to almost 7-8% uh, of the loan. Uh, which I didn't get because it came out as a premium. Do they still do that, or if you borrow five thousand dollars, do you still do you get five thousand dollars, or do you wind up getting forty five hundred and still have to pay the five thousand back? It's not that much. Uh, there, that's what's called loan fees. So what they do is they say, okay, you're eligible for five thousand five hundred in federal student loans, and then they take out one point zero five seven percent which is the current loan fees that they take out of the loan and that is given to the federal government or the processing for the processing of the loan. So they take that out. So what dispersed to the account would be the 5,500 minus the 1.057%. Well, at least that fee's lower than what I was paying way back in the day. Yeah, uh, Jacob, any uh, final thoughts here, the things that people need to know about as we uh, roll through this month of May and financial aid forms? Uh, not anything in particular. Like uh, for Shepherd University, just uh, know that we are trying our hardest to get every student, all the incoming freshmen and uh, continuing students packaged as soon as possible. We're working through the um, changes and um, we're almost there but I don't want to give a deadline yet because anything can happen that changes that too so well thank you for your time this morning and please say hello to Hans Fogel for us okay will do thank, thank you, you have a great day you too